Is anyone else noticing a trend of half-finished AAA games being brought to the market anyway? Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is a fun game, but it's not finished. Just like Street Fighter V launching without story mode, spectator mode, the in-game store, or online lobbies beyond two players, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is, once again, another example of a bare-bones AAA launch game. One that is setting a very crappy precedent for game makers. Unfinished games suck. We live in a beautiful world full of great games, yet there's a financial temptation clawing at publishers, the releasing of unfinished games. These days, it's so easy to patch and fix things that some game makers have used that space as a scapegoat for bringing half-finished games to the market. After all, games can be fixed and added to post-release, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be complete at launch, right? It's almost an oxymoron. I can poke so many holes into Infinite to make my point. The lifeless menus, the lifeless backgrounds, the reuse of character models from MVC3, the lack of alternate costumes, the unoptimized loading screens that take forever, the absence of any reward for completing arcade mode, but more importantly, the suspicious character pool. The roster of Infinite is full of questionable half-wanted characters like Spencer, Frank West, and Chris, among others from Capcom. Why are X-Men characters missing and what's with the reliance on Capcom characters? I'm sure this was a condition of the game's funding and a desire to cut back licensing costs, but still, this is Marvel vs. Capcom we're talking about, right? Even though I love the game, it's an example of another unfinished game that asks full price today in exchange for promises in the future. But promises you're gonna have to pay for. Winter Soldier, Black Widow, Venom, Monster Hunter, Sigma, and Black Panther. All characters we want today, but we're gonna have to pay for tomorrow. Characters most likely finished right now that we're gonna have to pay for in the future. You can buy the Infinite Character Pass for $30 right now, which will include all six. Now, Capcom actually started pre-selling the game and this Character Pass before telling anybody which characters were in the base game in the first place or how many there would be. That in itself is shady, and it does beg the question, why aren't those characters in the game in the first place? You know, given the relatively small and bland base character pool, it's a controversial half-finished AAA game that is holding back content, and I may have an explanation for it. We live in an era of pre-ordering. Love it or hate it, the more everyone does it, the more companies seek to design games that capture the day one sale. And if you really think about it, it motivates game companies to go all in on marketing ploys to get us into the mental states of pre-ordering. And we know all the usual suspects, don't we? Misleading trailers, withholding information, failing to clarify rumors, letting speculation run wild. Obviously, we can thank No Man's Sky for popularizing all of the above tactics in 2016, but there were plenty more examples before that. Two years prior, Halo The Master Chief Collection released and was broken for two full weeks, mostly its online matchmaking systems being affected. That same year, it was also Watch Dogs and its marketing controversy, and then Destiny in September, and then AC Unity that December. But let's back up even further. In 2010, Fable 3 launched, or as many referred to it as, Fable 2.5, the same month as Fallout New Vegas. Now, Fallout New Vegas was a pretty awesome game, but there's no denying the issues. Floating characters, missing textures, getting stuck in the geometry akin to an MMO, the consistent crashing to the desktop needed more time in the oven for sure. But what did they all have in common? Half-finished games. Many of those games would go on to be fixed, others not so much, while the rest getting some version of DLC in the future to correct their wrongdoings. Sometimes we paid for it, others, rarely, it was free. But ultimately, it does trickle down into the creation of new versions of the same damn games. One of the lesser discussed topics associated with these kinds of games is something called the trickle-down effect. It's a stone-cold fact that many or I, I guess I could say most video game sales happen during the first few weeks of a launch of a game, because games come and go. You just have to ask yourself, what is the average shelf life for a $60 game? Well, there's no way to tell for sure, but what I can tell you is that there is a way for companies to increase that shelf life. 
The trickle-down effect happens when companies release a game and then add content to it later on to increase word-of-mouth marketing. We're talking about anything from news releases, updates and fixes, DLC, new characters, new maps, a remaster, any form of exposure that can get out word-of-mouth marketing on their game. The more of these events they have, the more people talk about and play the game, the more they write posts on Reddit, make YouTube videos, host the game on streaming platforms, and write articles about it, the more we get reminded of it. You get the point, it's about creating awareness for the IP. So let's apply this to the release of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Alright, so scenario 1, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite comes out as a feature complete game and everyone loves it. It's got everything people want, 9 out of 10 or whatever. Infinite gets a ton of attention, the blue dots, for a good few months and then it dies down slowly until they release a major DLC pack that includes some new characters. It's a pretty standard yet optimistic outlook for a AAA game, at least one five years ago. As you can see, you've got these big lull spaces where no one's talking about the game or no one's writing articles about it. The excitement is over and people have moved on. Happens all the time, yet is a killer for an online game. So companies like Capcom are getting around this by trickling down content, and hence scenario number two. This is an actual scenario for the real Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite right now. The game released as a half-finished game, but just as many people were talking about it given its popularity as a beloved franchise. But since the game has been sliced up and delivered incomplete, it allows Capcom to bring in that missing content to the table, to allow more of those events to happen to get people talking about the game, to keep the holes filled and the message constantly out. It's how game makers keep their titles relevant. The only way to do that is to keep their games in the headlines and to slice up their content and trickle it down like a waterfall. This is of course a very rudimentary example and a very crude drawing by yours truly, but it is representative of other games such as Street Fighter V. But it's only the start of their master plans. Eventually, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is going to get a Hyper Edition, and then an Ultra Edition, and then a Hyper Ultra Ultimate Edition, and then a Game of the Year Edition. Will we have all the content by then, and what will that do to our graph? The alarming part about this behavior is that it trains the industry to become accepting towards half-baked games. Why are so many people satisfied with buying incomplete games? Is it the early access market taking over their expectations? Or really, is it the repeat release of so many AAA unfinished games getting us numb to the sensation of quality, at least, you know, at least some of us? To expect bare bones games, missing features, unoptimized ports, lazy and rushed games and DLC scandals and the like. Call me crazy, but I don't think we should allow this to happen. Anyway, I hope my childlike illustration of the trickle down effect helps shed some light on some of the less talked about sides of the game development process. Now, Capcom, give me my goddamn Deadpool. Have a great day guys, we'll see you on our next video. Peace, love and happiness.